Yes, there's a lot of names uh, that I still like for tomorrow. Amazon obviously is bullish. I, I, I believe at some point this week, you're going to see a 37.20, 37.50 push. That's the linear regression line. That's the measure of potential. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome uh, to another edition of uh, the AccessAtrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, feels like it's been like years since I recorded a video. It's only been a week. Uh, last week I was uh, on vacation, literally my first vacation in uh, 18 months since COVID started. Um, I'm relaxed, I'm calm, I'm focused, and you know, like we've been talking about for many, many moons, how incredibly important it is to kind of decompress and kind of take a step back, especially uh, what we've all went through for the last, you know, 18, 19 months or so, and just start enjoying life. I mean, I think that's the best way. And when you come back, you know, you're your focus becomes that much more in tune to what's going on. Um, I think you're seeing the market better, but I think your soul, just to purify your soul and just have a little bit of fun uh, in life after this tumultuous, just incredible, incredible time of our lives uh, is so necessary. So it's good to be back with you guys. Uh, first update uh, in a week. Hope everybody had a, a good trading week. Uh, last week, um, you know, as much things a change, right? The calendar changes. The more they're still the same. When I left, uh, the Nasdaq was incredibly strong. Um, you know, ever since we remounted the 50-day moving average, just been kind of this linear move here. You had moves uh, in Nvidia and Apple and Facebook and Microsoft and Facebook, uh, Tesla before it kind of reversed today. Uh, Netflix finally uh, got off the ground. We'll go to individual pivots in a second. But uh, what's what's cool about what's going on here is that. The level of disconnect, okay, that you've seen from you know many of the indexes are really showing you again. For if you're a new trader, it, you know you kind of have to know where everything is. But the idea that the Dow down 400 points, like it was this morning, uh, at a certain point, it's less important than it was 20 years ago uh, when I started. Now it's just more of like water cooler talk. Uh, is your money safe? The markets are in tur turmoil. Kind of bait and click for all the advertisers to kind of take advantage of your emotional status. But if you look at where the NASDAQ composite is compared to where uh, the IWM, right? And the IWM, I looked at charts uh, over the weekend and I started looking at it this morning and, and you know, the, the Russell never, you know, never rallied, never really participated uh, even in last week's move. And before you turn around and say, well, what's the big deal about the Russell uh, compared to the Dow? Well, here's a big deal. The Dow Jones and just industrial average is 30 stocks. So for the Dow to go down, you know, 30, you know, 300, 400, 500 points, it looks really, really, you know, um, you know, really crazy on paper, right? When they start talking about it on the evening news, but it's 30 stocks. It's not really a big deal. If Boeing is up eight and Apple is up five and, uh, you know, Microsoft is up, well, you know, it's a two, 300 points. So the idea that the market was down 400 points today, a lot of people didn't even notice. And I really didn't notice till about lunchtime. But when you talk about the importance of the Russell, and again, you don't need to be have any exposure to the Russell. The same way I talk about, you know, even if you don't trade the high beta names like the Amazons of the world, the Apples of the world, it's still very, very important that they act well because they represent speculation money. So if you turn your attention, for example, to the IWM, the reason why this was kind of a big deal, or at least could potentially be a big deal, right? Is that number one, it represents 2,000 stocks, 2,000 all speculation money, whether it's a small cap stock, price stock, or a small capitalized company that's three, four hundred dollars a share. These are mid to small cap companies that do respect uh, and do reflect speculation money. So if there is a buyer strike, for example, on the Russell, it, it might kind of filter into other things. So for example, the Dow today did absolutely nothing. It was down 400 points. And the fact that it rebounded off the 10 day moving average just like that and cut its uh, losses in half does show you how impressive the bull market continues to be. If you look at the queues, at one point today, they gassed out. Look at, look at the 60 minute channel, right? At one point today, they gassed out 
put in an inverted hammer, came in really, really hard. At one point, it didn't look like the Qs were going to completely roll over and start kind of joining forces with the Dow Jones and uh, the Russell. And the Qs literally went from 60 and a half, right, 360 and a half, all the way down to 57. It's very, very rare, just to give you an idea how strong this uh, technology run has been. It's very, very rare that something puts in an inverted hammer. Okay, if you're if you're very new uh, to uh, Japanese candlesticks, uh, a hammer is very bullish. So an inverted hammer was very well not bullish. And the point is, it put in an inverted hammer. It held the rising support, and it's very, very odd to see a market right or an ETF go from bearish to bullish within the same session and pretty much close at the highs again. Market is incredibly bullish right now. And at any point, it could turn around and start losing levels. But that's the point. You don't guess. And at some point today, I even uh, tweeted out on the private feed. I said, listen, just, you know, we, we hit an inverted hammer, right? That's a sell signal. From that sell signal, Q's went down five points. And I also wanted to really emphasize the point of sell signal doesn't mean short, right? Because if you saw every intraday sell signal, on the NASDAQ composite, since it reclaimed the 50-day moving average on May the 20th, you would have gotten trapped at the bottom every single time. And that's exactly what happened today. Uh, very, very impressive. Um, you had big moves on a lot of names. Again, a lot of names did rest today. Uh, names like Facebook had a tremendous run. It did rest. A lot of the semiconductors uh, rested as well. Even NVIDIA at one point was down like seven, eight dollars only to turn around. Look at the rally back in the video. Talk about, you know, this thing literally went from 8.30 all the way down, like literally all the way down to 8.14, only to come back up 13, 14 dollars off the lows. Again, incredible bullish market. Uh, the, the, the names that have rallied, the really, really big rallies, they, they need to be continued to be at least appreciated at the bottom of the range. Because uh, if they're holding, they keep on holding the rising 60 minute support, and keep on trapping eager shorts or new shorts or uneducated shorts talking about that's is it the market's oversold excuse me overbought this is it this is the reversal they keep on getting trapped day after day after day and this has been the the mantra of the market uh for the last you know two three months ago since that may 20 uh remount so look is it you know can you buy everything right now no no i don't think you can buy everything right now okay i mean look at the move in the video like this is a name that you continuously have to look at strength a name like apple uh, that broke out above, you know, above this 128 and a half, 129 level. You know, this the stock is up. You know, the stock is up 14, 14 points on Apple. It's like the equivalent of of Tesla going up 80 dollars. I mean, this is an absolutely huge move. A name like this has to be only uh, played on weakness, like weakness trapping into bottom support. But if you took at names like an Amazon of the world that had a, just a ridiculous run today, if you look at names, for example. Uh, like a shop that could turn into potentially an Amazon tomorrow, you really do still see very, very aggressive money flow. Uh, speaking of Amazon, um, you saw today they were buying the 3700s right off the word go, right? And there was a big level here. Well, again, we'll get into the individual pivots in a second. There was a big level here, pre-market here. Uh, off this 25 level, and there was a big level here off the 54 level. But they weren't even they weren't even looking at like the 3650s. They were jumping at the 3700s right away. And at a certain point of the day, they just like kind of forgot about the 3700s, and they started going right away to the 3800s. So there is a monster continuation money flow uh, in these high tech beta uh, gorilla darlings that hedge funds and mutual funds and pension funds love to own especially when they become runaway trains. And these are the names, you know, if they do open up weak, you, you have to continue. And we've been, we've been talking about this series of events now for months. You have to continue to buy them on dips until the buyers put up a strike and these stocks start forming uh, sell signals below uh, rising support, which again, if you try to, to guess the reversal or try to uh, you know, preempt the reversal. You've been run over uh, every single time. So yes, there's a lot of names uh, that I still like for tomorrow. Amazon obviously is bullish. I, I, I believe at some point this week, you're going to see a 37.20, 37.50 push. That's the linear regression line. That's the measure potential. Again, listen, is it possible it has a res day tomorrow? Of course. I mean, look, the stock was up 165 points today. 
Is it possible Amazon, you know, goes down 30, 40 bucks tomorrow uh, at some point in the day? Look, of course, would it be, would it shock me that it gaps up tomorrow and goes up to 37.50? Of course not. That's the whole point. And I know a lot of you guys are still long, have runners from this morning. So again, manage your runners, even if it doesn't get there uh, tomorrow, 37.20, 37.50. If, the, if, if there's an inside day tomorrow for Amazon and on a third less volume, because look at the volume of this thing today, just an absolute rocket ship. If there's a, a, a res day tomorrow, you know, and shorts get trapped, you might, you, you probably start seeing higher prices towards uh, the end of the week. Same thing with shop. I like shop tomorrow as well. Look at shop here. Had a big, big run. It kind of looked like Amazon. Went sideways for two and a half weeks. This thing is a stone throws away from seeing the 1620 level. This looks really, really good as well. Even a name like Netflix today, busted out today. Again, small volume, didn't really see the big option flow, but this is the first close over supply. Even a name like Zoom uh, that I traded today as well. It's giving you a linear move, but keep this in mind on a name like Zoom. It hasn't even started its macro push. If you look at Zoom, it has to clear out this whole channel to even start its macro push. So you have to be a little bit more patient with this name. But the point is all these stocks are taking their turns, coming out of macro. And if you believe in the theory that macro is kind of important, right? Like you saw with Amazon, Apple, uh, NVIDIA, Tesla, and all that good stuff. Well, yeah, close above supply on Zoom becomes that much more important. Everybody, obviously, that trade Zoom should have uh, a lot of focal point uh, in that name. So getting into uh, tomorrow's session, again, again, you have to be bi uh, bull bias until it's not, but be very, very wary. Again, a lot of time traders become very, very complacent, right? And they'll turn around and say, well, who cares what Dan says? You know, you know, IWM held, right? It held the bottom of the range. It's going to go back higher. You'd think so, right? You'd think so, especially in this type of environment, but there is no guarantees. And always, you always have to play devil's advocate and keep in the back of your mind that if if they do, right, if, if they, right, if the IWM does break below this rising support, you know, it starts going down to the 220 level, is it possible, right? Is it possible it drags down a market, especially the NASDAQ 100 that had this massive, massive run just to get some sort of, um, just to get some sort of uh, reason, right? Just some sort of reason to kind of backtest everything at once. So just be very, very wary. I I'm always conscious to know where we are. And again, you don't want to be long the market. You want to be long stocks that are very, very bullish and still in this type uh, of environment. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. Uh, again, my first day back today, uh, after literally nine days of uh, being on vacation, very, very good. A lot of rest, almost two rests. I started becoming antsy a little bit around day five, but uh, overall, uh, very, very good rest, much needed, like a fish needed water. So let's talk about today's pivots. Uh, UNH uh, 410 needs to build. Not a big move at all. Uh, for all you guys who did take it, not a big move. Um, it took out 410, went to 411. Uh, 411 and change. I still like it, but again, it's a New York Stock Exchange stock. You have to be uh, very, very patient with it. It's not going to be like a Tesla that's going to give you a $12 run. These names, you got to be pretty patient and use the previous day's low uh, as, your, uh, as your rising support. This was obviously the biggest move of the day. I still think the stock sees the 3750 level, 3525 huge area needs to build. And 622 highs of 33554. Uh, the first, you know, the first supply is 3576. This thing just went out of its mind. Uh, congratulations for all you guys who have runners. This took out all levels uh, and traded all the way up to uh, 3685. Again, any dip tomorrow uh, needs to be bought. Just an incredible, incredible move. Uh, Tesla. I actually got caught. Not. I don't want to use the word caught. Um, I bought the dip on Tesla today into the rise in support, and it held the bounce perfectly, and it started moving back up, not a lot. And then all of a sudden, some news. Now, I can't figure out what news it was, but there was some sort of news with China, something or other. So I lost the dollar in the trade, which is good, because it ran, you know, went down another $16, $17. But the point was, this is what happens sometimes when you get lucky or unlucky. If that news never came out, it held the bottom of the range initially so good, it would have came back up, but again, Luck sometimes does play a game. That's why, we, again, we, we know where our outs are if a stock loses a level. Uh, anyway, make a long story short, it lost about a dollar uh, on that first remount and yada, yada, yada. Again, I still try to figure out what the hell exactly happened, but it is what it is. Uh, KYMR never 
retested its second uh, second confirmation. Wish never got down to the 1120 area. The stock does look lower, man. They, they had some news today. They couldn't even rally the stock. It looks lower. Uh, edit never got above 57. Uh, okay, so here's where I caught ZM about three bucks. So not a you know, not a big move, but I, again, I like the way it's moving. Um, I, I like the way it's moving off this this channel here. Uh, again, it just needs to you know here's a 399 400. Uh, it went to like three you know 403 and a half or so. I still think it needs to reclaim macro levels to get it going. Um, but you know it looks good. It looks good. Just slow steady grind there. I think it's going to need a little bit of rest, but it still does look uh, good from macro levels. Uh, CRM, nice move here off this 249, needs to build. Here was CRM, right? Here's CRM. It took out the 249, uh, went to 253. Nice little move there. Uh, Amazon exploding. Uh, Netflix went late in the day. 539 needs to build. I still like Netflix, especially on dips. Here's the 539. Uh, closed within you know within you know dollar of the highs went to 543. I still like. I think it sees if the market continues to be strong. I think it still, still sees about 548 tomorrow. Uh, GameStop not a big move. Uh, it went below that. It went below the 40, the 90. It went down like a dollar and change. Not a big move there as well. Uh, new highs on ZM. Uh, 43.50 is a supply, right? Look where it stopped. Four, uh, 403.40. So perfect supply move on ZM. Sweet move there. Uh, buyer came in and they never they never really pressed it down. Um, Amazon just ridiculous. 425 call buyer uh, came in uh, there and Netflix obviously uh, Netflix they are coming in for 42 and a halves and that is I believe that is it right that is it so that's it that's it guys good to be back hope everybody has uh, a great. Uh, great remainder of the summer, remainder of the week. Uh, back to dad duties. My son has a basketball game tonight, opening night of his third, one of three travels basketball teams. So again, daddy duty cars. Guys, have a great night and God's help. I'll see you tomorrow.